And this is to highlight too when you're doing customer discovery, talk to each of these seven personas and have, um, and we'll go into these questions here in a minute, um, have questions to ask for the, the different types of personas. I want to talk briefly about segmentation um, and thinking about how you are segmenting the customers that you want to talk to. Uh, you know, is it geographic based? Are you only serving folks at Georgetown in DC, in the US? Um, demographic, you know, age, gender, occupation, uh, what's their household income? Uh, and behavioral is, is pretty important. Psychographic is even more important. Um, for behavioral, you know, what are the behaviors of the things they do that align with the product or service that you're designing? Um, and psychographic taps into their lifestyle, how they view themselves, what story do they tell themselves about themselves, and how does your product or service amplify or support that story? So every individual you interview uh, for customer interviews, they're the hero in their own hero's journey. Right? You are a small supporting character proposing potentially, or at least learning about the value a solution could provide as another supporting character in this story. So with sunglasses, we're literally an accessory. All right, we're gonna slightly amplify your sex appeal, slightly improve how you see the world, um, and if you're the type of person who tells yourself that you're altruistic and you wanna make the world a better place, you wanna help people in developing countries receive cataract surgeries, then you're really a lot more likely to buy this. Uh, so understanding what is that narrative, the self-talk that people have about the pain point and problem you're hoping to solve. Does anybody have any questions before we move on about segmentation? So this is kind of the timeline folks go through to buy a product. Uh, and research shows that the average consumer interacts with a brand between 7 and 13 times before they make their first purchase. So the first time you talk to somebody about your solution is not going to be the time that they buy. All right? They need to hear about it multiple times, they need to see something on social media, they need to see friends using the product or service, uh, they need to interact with you or somebody on your team or somebody at the store multiple times um, before they actually make a buying decision. And then once you get them to buy once, it's much easier to get the future ones, but there's a lot of friction and barriers that prevent that initial sale. Um, and so making sure you are thoughtful about events you create throughout the, the process, one of the first ones is customer discovery. Um, and making them aware that they have this pain point, they have this problem. But again, you're not selling in any of these interviews, you're just looking to, to collect information. Um, here are some example questions about point of purchase. Uh, so you know, in the past 12 months, did you buy this product? Great. Where did you purchase the product? Or when, sorry, did you purchase the product? Where were you? What time of day was it? What was the weather like? Was anyone else with you? That's a really interesting question, because one, it can lead to referrals. Two, it can identify other personas like the budget owner or the saboteur or other people um, that you might want to talk to about. And then you also want to ask, did you buy anything else at the same time? What are the complementary products that you might be able to um, develop like a channel partnership with. Like I've sold a lot of socks and sunglasses together because they're both accessories. I have a few friends that own sock companies and you're not going to not buy sunglasses because you also bought socks. You see what I'm saying? So think about complementary products. People, a lot of people buy peanut butter and they buy jelly at the same time. What are things that pair nicely with what you're doing? And you might even be able to do customer discovery interviews with folks who run or work at companies that have a nice complement there, understanding how they market their products. Um, so this is looking ahead to next week. Let's pass these bad boys out. So we have the ultimate list of customer discovery questions. And then we also have a very simple, let me keep one of them, uh, customer discovery interview prep sheet. Um, and so uh, I will email you electronic copies, but sometimes having a physical thing is helpful to look at. To review these questions, you can highlight or circle the ones that make the most sense for your ideas. Uh, your assignment by next week is to conduct at least 10 customer discovery interviews. And by the time we get to the Georgetown Entrepreneurship Challenge, the end of next month, is to do at least 30. And yeah, I'll throw this out there. Whoever in the class does the most customer discovery interviews will also get an A in the class. Okay, there's some incentive there. 
document them, track it, don't just be like, yo, I did 1,750, that sounds a little absurd. Make it a prime number, it's more likely to be true. Um, and you can then cite that in your pitch for the entrepreneurship challenge. And you wanna, I'm not gonna ask what was the name and email of everybody you interviewed, but I want you to be able to articulate what were some of the questions you asked, what was the hypotheses that you were trying to validate or invalidate, and then what was the feedback you heard from the people you interviewed, and did that validate or invalidate? Um, so we'll probably spend the first 10 minutes of class next week having people share what they learned through this customer discovery process. Um, I'm gonna go through some of these custom customer questions. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes at the end to talk as well. Um, does anybody right now know what idea they want to work on and go through this customer discovery process with? Kate, what you got? Um, okay, well, I've been working on this with someone else too that's not in this class, but basically it'd be like a red solo cup, but it'd be made out of some sort of bioplastic, so it's yeah. biodegradable. Awesome. Can you think of one customer discovery question that might be helpful? Uh, yeah, we were actually making a survey. One of them was just like, are you concerned about the environment? Yeah. Cool. Clara, how about you? Uh, it's the hotel RV rental. Is that so what, can you think of one or two customer discovery questions that might be useful? Um, have you traveled recently? Yeah. Where did you stay when you traveled? Yeah. What was your budget for, per night when you were traveling? And think through that, like, you can have long lists of questions. You don't have to ask every single question in each <laughs> customer discovery interview, but the more you have in your pocket or, you know, on your list of questions, uh, the better prepared you'll be. Uh, I was also working with a couple, couple other people for like a campus specific, like college campus specific food delivery service that can like connect with like, whether it's like debit dollars or real swipes, like specific to Georgetown if you're thinking about it. Now I would also like employ students. Um, so like some of the questions that I was thinking about was like, what's the most like, common reason that you have for like skipping meals? Like why would you skip a meal and why would you skip? Um, like a snack. Yeah, like I haven't like finished my time. slides and I don't have time for dinner so I have to teach tonight, so I just eat peanut butter crackers. Yeah. So good reason to skip a meal. And like how much would you pay for like a delivery, like how, stuff like that? What's the value of convenience? Yeah. What, um, there's a whole other thing called the Van Westendorp price sensitivity thing where you ask four questions, and I will, I'll follow this up and send it to you. It's like, um, at what point is the, price too expensive that it wouldn't be worth it anymore? At what point is it kind of expensive but you'd still buy it? What's the, at what point is it so cheap that you question the value of it? Um, and there's one other one. But it makes like a, a range of numbers to figure out what you can charge for like delivery or something like that. Uh, look up a company called 20 Tables. So they're DC based, it's a food truck thing and they partner with GW where any GW student can use their meal plan to buy meals for $6.60 from all these food trucks that now go around GW's campus. Um, and it's $6.60 per meal and $1.10 is actually donated to give a meal to a homeless person. I think like for five meals purchased they donate one meal, um, which is a pretty cool model and there are logistical, technical, and bureaucratic challenges of getting a university to have a meal plan be accepted. So that's also something to think about. Does anybody else have an idea that they're thinking about um, would make sense or be interested in, in doing customer discovery? Uh, so for like another class, we had to do a project on like something that was like ethically based. So my group decided to do a uh, restaurant called Fresh Dyer, which um, <coughs> employs like recently incarcerated individuals. Yeah. Um, so I guess like through the discovery process we can like kind of flush out some of the ideas of people who are like willing to go to like said restaurants. Yeah, definitely. And some of the, the ideas too might have different types of questions like who are humans who would go to that restaurant and then who are formerly incarcerated people that would want to work at that restaurant. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know Georgetown has the pivot program which works with returning citizens. They go through like a whole education program. They get matched with companies to do internships, I think, uh, in the spring, a couple days a week. I've also got a friend, Will Avia, who, um, he's a returning citizen, started a company called Clean Decisions. We only employs people that were previously incarcerated. And they do everything from like event uh, security, preparation, cleanup. They do commercial kitchen cleaning. He actually got his first job at a Chipotle. Um, and after being rejected from like 40 other job interviews, like 
it's pretty hard for a lot of folks with something on your criminal record that you have to tell the truth about when you you know fill out that job application. And so how do you overcome those biases and finding places where, hey, this is a place that we want to hire folks and bring them into the community? It's pretty powerful. It's awesome. Cool. Does anybody have any other questions about the customer discovery process or what the expectations are for next week? Cool. I'm going to add something to the 10 ideas spreadsheet um, where you're just going to put in how many customer discovery interviews you've done. We'll update it each week. The goal, hopefully you realize this, is that you're not going to finish customer discovery in the next six days. This is like a semester long and actually like a lifelong process of like coming up with ideas, talking to people to see uh, if it makes sense to keep moving forward with it. Uh, and it also gets you out of the mindset of, I've got to save on the board all these ideas because you actually have to talk to people about it. And just because you spend five to 30 minutes talking to somebody, doesn't mean they're going to steal your idea and go build the whole business that you're already putting a lot of time and effort and energy into. Most humans are super lazy. They're not going to steal your business idea. So find ways to talk to people about it, um, especially strangers. And then for next week, the focus will be on sales. Um, we have in the weekly plan, I think there's three sales videos to watch. They're all from movies, Glenn, 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 Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, which is like a 1994 sales movie. And uh, you guys know Alec Baldwin? He has a seven and a half minute monologue where he flips out on salespeople that suck. And it's like ABC, always be closing. It's like, you can't drink any coffee. Coffee's for closers. When's the last time you closed a deal? I'll give you coffee once you actually make a sale. It's pretty good, slash pretty intimidating. Um, and then Boiler Room is another one. Ben Affleck has some awesome monologues. These are R-rated monologues. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I think you can hear some profanity at this point in your uh, professional development. Um, and then, Sally, do you want to take it over and share anything with the students? Yeah, I have it in the presentation in the drive. Tell me, let's see what we can do to find this. Yeah, if it's, if it's ready, we're ready. Yeah. It's going to be in here. Okay, so, uh, maybe we can do like that. Startify is an app, it's a web app, that will basically replace the 10 ideas per week that you currently have. Um, so, I'll go over it in the interest. Uh, what you get is you post the idea, you get initial traction, and then you swipe right to left, so it's like Tinder. If some of you use it, and I'm sure you'll do guys. So, uh, we some have, people use Bumble. I went on Bumble. My, my, my. Oh. <laughs> so we found that Quora has lots of, kind of requests for where it can validate the early stage ideas, and you can see that like what's happening right now is social media, your friends, there's Server Monkey, there's Kickstarter, there's Product Hunt but all of them have some like advantages and disadvantages, especially for the case where you just come up with the idea and you really want to test it really quick, get some first uh, feedback. None of this would really be tailored to that. So that's how Startify came into existence. It's as simple as it should be. Uh, you will see this if you're on laptop or there's also a uh, screen with the phone. And what happens is you post the idea, so say, um, like the rental services, you say the name, and also for the ideas per week, if you could say the week, and then like if it's week number 10, you say 10.1, 10.2, and then you explain the idea, and then you post it, and then people who are on the server will like it, if they like it, they swipe right, so it left, and they can also subscribe to your channel. And then what basically Professor Malloy will see, and you will see, is the ideas and the feedback. So how many you think of up uploads did you get, average price that people voted for. Um, there's going to be analytics that you will receive. And then there's uh, the types of it will be age, area, gender, and solvency. So uh, we have three options. You will get the access to startup and the code you have to use. And I'll send it to Prof Malloy's class. Um, and I'll send the promo code and it will be at $3.99 and then if you could scan the QR code it will take you to the website and then you can register and let me know if there's any issues with the website. And so, first of all, thank you so much for literally building this to help our class collect these ideas and not just have them live in a Google Sheet that doesn't get a lot of 
attention uh, necessarily. As I still look at it, but I don't necessarily process them all. Now we're going to have a way for you to upload ideas and then give each other feedback on those ideas. And I'm going to say spend 10 to 15 minutes a week looking at other people's ideas. Yes, it's good. No, it's not. Um, and the subscribe button. Tell them what that means. So subscribe button currently, like it's it's a MB, it's just a MVP. But in case you have the idea and you want, want to keep validating and ask more questions about the idea itself, you'll have the profile for the idea separately, and then you can keep posting and asking and validating. Um, and we already have a few people, like a bunch of customers who are swiping right and swiping left, so you'll get some feedback as well. Cool. And then you'll have the access to the spreadsheet as you. Yeah, and so I'll, I'll be able to also look up, you'll each get a dashboard for your ideas, and then I'll be able to see everybody's dashboard and track that folks are doing their 10 ideas. Um, it might be a better idea to do them before like 6.50 on Thursdays, but you don't have to. But if you do them earlier in the week, people can get feedback. Um, and as you do these 10 customer discovery interviews in the next week, if you do the interviews and you realize it's a crappy idea, you can switch. You are not stuck with one idea, you're going to keep coming up with 10 ideas every week, um, and by the end of March, you will have picked one that you've done at least a few dozen customer interviews on and pitched that at the Georgia Entrepreneurship Challenge. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to, how about, I'll send an email out to the students and the students and you want to get by that. Hey, Clara. Where's the fully uh, stop button on that video camera? Sorry about that. Wait, did you actually pop one? Yeah. Cool. Fully bought one. But it was like 20 bucks, so it was like a shitty buy. So I wanted to get the business model. And there's some. I was in the end of that actually.